I was like, is that a full Ed Hardy piece? Sure is. Babes, yeah, I should have never true. thrown my Ed Hardy, Hardy away. And Ed Hardy is so cute. It is making a comeback. All the young, hot, turnt girls are wearing Ed Hardy now. I'm too bad I'm an old, burnt girl. No, like, you're not. not. Yeah, she I'm is. not turnt anymore. It, She's it almost girl is 40. In you. It is so, true. don't try to shade her. I'm <laughs> Who are you? Yeah, okay. who are you? Introduce yourself to our um, audience. I'm Fanita. Hi, I do TikTok. I have a podcast on YouTube. I do social media. I'm a comedian of sorts. <laughs> and you might be like, oh my God, she does comedy? She's so hot. That's true too. <laughs> um, I'm from Alabama. Yeah. What part of Alabama? I was from a really, really small town, all white school. I went to a school that was like K through 12, uh, very Southern. Mm. And that was uh, good for a young black girl. <laughs> Ooh. It was good growth. So what happened with your first viral moment? Um, it actually got deleted. <laughs> no, why? <laughs> I remember this day, like, it, like I was so sick. But it, I had been posting on TikTok for about like nine months, and I had just started getting like some views on my videos. And then I had my first video do over a million views, and I was like, and it, and it would have, it would have went even crazier. It had like a million views in like five hours. Wow. Yeah. So it was like I was like gagged. I was like, oh my god, y'all, I'm getting us out the hood. <laughs> let's go. Let's go. <laughs> I was like. I'm, we're rich. Yeah. <laughs> and and then I remember I woke up the next day and the TikTok had took down the video. And I remember in the moment I was like, oh my God, how could they do this to me? I'll never have a video that does a million views again. Mm. Like my life is over. And I literally made a video about it getting taken down. Cause I was just sick to my stomach. I yeah. was like, what? Yeah. Cause that was back in the day. TikTok used to take down my videos all the time. Why? It was like anytime I said anything sexual, it would get taken down. And oh. you only say sexual things. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, understood. But I just I just kept trucking. And then I started my podcast like last summer. Um, Bottoms Up with Fanita. They were on it. Make sure you go check that video out. Oh, yeah. You're great. here. It was a great episode. Love them down. Speaking of TikTok, <laughs> have you guys heard about this situation going on in New York City where the girls are being punched? punched in the subway? Yeah, I've seen that. All these women are posting TikTok saying like, I just left this bakery and I got punched. I just left my dentist. Yeah, like they've been like walking down the punched. street and there's somebody in New York just punching women. He like but punched Bethany Frankel. I don't know who Bethany Frankel is. <laughs> she was a housewife. She was a housewife. Biggie, I think we should evaluate something. Okay, let's evaluate. He's only punching white women. There is that because he knows he's get clocked up. Now, if yeah, you guys I feel like he punches a real New York like girl from the Bronx <laughs> or a Puerto well, Rican. She gonna get yeah. fighting yeah. back. She knows. Yeah. She's she, yeah. she, it's gonna be like WWE, like yeah. Mike Tyson, J Lo yeah. style. Don't come for me, J Lo. J Lo. Yeah, uh, you know, right exactly. Oh my god, have you? You know, I've orange fought. juice at the Bottega. Yeah. <laughs> that was so rough for me, you guys. The orange you know, drink. Being on the B. <laughs> Those, if you know, you know. <laughs> the J-Lo hate on TikTok is incredible. But I feel like J-Lo deserves it. Also, she has like the worst stories of just being the worst person on set, being so yes. cool to people. Like, I've heard nothing but bad things about so J-Lo bad. Lopez, which is sad to me because I used to be a big J-Lo girl when I was younger. So I have loved J-Lo since Selena. And me too. she's going on tour in As July. Selena? No, um, so that would have been bomb. Can you, can you imagine? That would have been so. I'd go to that tour. Yeah, I'd, I'd go to that tour. No, she's going on tour as herself, as the woman who is really in love with Ben Affleck. This is me now. <laughs> but the fact that they are they're really together. That is they're so amazing. married. That's, they're married. That's so it's crazy. It's for real. Anyway, she's going on tour. I was like, okay, we gotta go. We gotta go. After seeing all of the TikTok hate, I was influenced to move on to the other side of the spectrum because I was like, this woman is horrible. Yeah. Like, I don't, <laughs> like, I don't not your person. Wanna... Wait, so you you are a real life on camera. You listen to J-Lo's music. Yes. This I know. is the first, you're the first person I've ever met that's actually said that they listen to Jennifer Lopez. So I don't like listen to it regularly, but I know every single song. She and... does. When she's, when she's upstairs jumping, it's she'll put on j music. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's not like is she it? rides to it in the car. how you knew that your love would be untrue, would you lie to, to me, me and call me baby? baby. We're from that time. Okay. Here. Yeah. Yeah, like, give you is, that, is that a sample for This is thing? how it's got to be. She's too young. First of all, I won't take you cheating on me. You know what I love most about JLo? It's her mouth. She has a beautiful mouth. I love her smile. I love her giggle. And I think JLo is gorgeous. It's not sexual. I love <laughs> I love Jennifer Lopez, the actress. Oh, oh she's I a terrible don't. actor. Really? Enough? We have to put some respect on that movie. Uh, that okay. movie. Was Enough and Selena were fantastic. That's what yeah. I'm saying. Those and you love the cell. No, but that was beautiful. It wasn't hurt. In the you Bronx. <laughs> I like to, it reminds me of when I was a kid and I used to take my hair out and run up and down the street. I had this crazy but messy Snoop hair. But Snoop does that all the time too. Let's keep it real. Some of these rappers that have been in the game for a long yeah. time still talk about it, even though they're not slanging anymore. 
What I have figured out is that anytime JLo does talk about the Bronx, everybody from New York says that she never even lived in the this Bronx. Is true, yeah. This is true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's you're right. You're right. It's like right. the one girl who I saw this person stitch something that she did and she was like, please stop. I sat next to you in chemistry. We were like at a white girl Catholic school. You sat next to Mary Elizabeth and I sat next to like Hannah Christian. Like, please stop Jennifer. Yeah. Because she's trying to be something she isn't. I think mm-hmm. that Snoop can do that. He can do that because he has real Lived cred. It. Like, I feel like Jennifer Lopez, like, takes experiences that people have lived and then just says that she did it. Oh, and then every- guys, I feel bad for her if that's true. I mean, who knows? She's J-Lo. She's a goddess. She's a queen. And, and I goddesses love- lie sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Goddesses lie. <laughs> to get with I mean, just let's just pull the veil up. It's true. What I mean, lip oil are you wearing? It looks great. Oh, thanks. It's called Buxom. Hmm. I'll show it to you. If any of you listened to us on Finita's podcast, you know that we talked about skincare. We talked about lip stuff because your lip stuff was great. Mm -hmm. We also talked a lot about how I'm white. Yep, and how Biggie hates black people. And my nickname (laughs) is Biggie and Finita. You know what I was thinking about today, though, really quick? I was thinking something. So my name is Miranda Mayday. My initials Mm are M&M. Yeah. M&M. Okay. He's a white rapper. I think it's something with the M and M's because like M and M's are cool with black people. So M and M, because M and M, M and M's are black on the inside. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. So Marshall, Marshall Mathers, like black people respect him, right? He's not like a like a weird Until he white. Said that one word that yeah. one time. Yeah. <laughs> He, that's he's a, that's debatable. Okay, okay, okay. He's well, a good lyricist. You got the pen, bro, but don't say no crazy ass yeah. words. Okay, he said a lot of crazy shit for sure. He really has. He has. He has. But I mean, admiration. is he not? Like, he was the only white guy in the group. Yeah. Uh, let's not and forget about saying, Vanilla Ice. Thank you very much. Let's not forget about I, He didn't have to say the N word. <laughs> you right. But I'm just trying to say <laughs> that there's something with the M&Ms going on that's, that's validated, honey. Whiter, validated. Because I'm... Chocolate on the inside. But don't get me wrong, guys. I don't hate Miranda because she's white. I hate her because she's a woman. (laughs) Plain and simple. (laughs) Put your hand in the damn teapot and tell us what we're actually talking about. Okay, now we're getting getting into real tea time. Real tea time. Now, guys, what you're watching on camera is two interracial people who happen to be lesbians enjoy and show their love to the world. I'm trying, but in she's the, in, in the wild. This oh. is live. This is called get into it. Yeah, get, get into, into it. it. <laughs> yeah, really feel People the vibes. That, yeah. <laughs> okay, describe your first kiss. Ooh. <gasps> this is cute. Oh my God. Have you had one yet? <laughs> Girl. Okay, my first real official kiss, which I don't think I've ever told this story before. I love it. But it was actually with a girl's boyfriend. Uh, and she was smart. Right there. Oh, so you're smart. a homewrecker. Nope. Let me, let me, let me. The girl was there. She, okay. she wanted me to. Ooh. For some reason. Fetish? Yeah. I don't know. For some reason, like, white girls are never really intimidated by me. And so, like, in high school and in college, white girls would, like, they would think it was funny when I would, like, flirt with their boyfriends or, like, you know, because I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a flirt and I'm a jokester or whatever. So, like, they would never care. They'd be like, oh my God, Fanita. I have a and, question. What? Were you heavier? Yes. Exactly. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, exactly. So they were yeah. just like, oh, they didn't yeah. think you could pull. Yeah. And yeah. then I, you know, let me not get into that. But, I got you. I got you. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, it was like, it was my senior year, I think. And it was like, um, after New senior Year's. Senior year of high school. Senior year of high school. It was New Year's Eve. And okay. like, I was at like some friends. We were having like a get together for our grade or whatever. And like, uh, it was like it hit 12. And like one of the girls was like, oh my God, if I need to kiss my boyfriend. Da, da, da. And so we just like pecked each other. When was your first real, like, romantic kiss? So, like, you liked the person. That one actually almost, des- that one destroyed the end of my senior year. Um, so oh my basically, God. It really did. So basically, uh, my stepmom hated me. All oh right, God. let's just go ahead and un- rip that bandaid off. My stepmom hated my fucking guts. Like, she hated me down. You know, How long like, was she step? Was your stepmom? She was my stepmom since I was a toddler. Because okay. my mom died when I was like two years old. Mm. Um, so she became my stepmom like six months later after my mom died. Which like, damn, dad, let the body get cold. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> um. Anyway, so that she part. hated me, and we always like butted heads, and she abused me. All this, you know, poor shit. We'll Anyways, unpack that later. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll rewind. Anyway, so. It was prom season, and so right before prom, I ended up calling my stepmom a bitch because we had gotten into like this huge fucking argument, prom dress shopping. Me and my friends had planned to go to the beach after prom because I lived like two hours from the beach. Mm-hmm. Enter the boys. So we <laughs> actually go to the beach, and it's like 5 p.m. It's super cold. Like My friends are like splashing each other in the water. I'm just like laughing. I'm just like, damn, man. Life like this sure is sweet. 
I like literally, like literally remembering this moment, like with my friends, like oh I can't wait to like graduate high school, like be able to like do this all the time with yeah. my friends. And I remember they pulled me into the water, and that's when I couldn't swim, and I didn't like having water in my eyes. Mm. So like I'm like, ah, so water, my eyes. it burns. Yeah. yeah. So I go up to these group of like white boys. They look like like frat boys, like typical white boys. Abercrombie and Fitch, yes, khaki, exactly. khaki shorts. Uh, that's hoodies. a southern white boy. Yeah, I know it was that one. like homegrown southern Corn white boys. Fed. And so <laughs> they scare me. So at this point in my life. I had very little to no like interactions with like men in like a romantic sense. So I went up to them and I was like, "Hey fellas, uh, anybody got a towel?" And they were like, "No, but you can use my hoodie or whatever." And so you let me like wipe my face on this hoodie. And so then I just started chatting, and you know, hindsight is twenty twenty. They probably thought that I was like flirting or whatever, but. To me, it was like I had guy friends at my school, and like I would just like you know just be chatting. Yeah. So then my friends come up, and we're all chatting, and like you know it's like haha guys, this is fun. You guys are cool. And so then we're soaking wet. So me and my friends are like, okay, let's go change. So we go up, we're changing, and one two of the boys come up to us, and they're like, hey, do you think your friend could give us a ride to the gas station so we can get like chasers for alcohol? And then I was like, yeah, I'm sure she'll take y'all. And then so my friend was like, okay, cool. So then I go to get in the front, and one of the boys is like, well there, sister, get in the back seat with my friend. Ooh. And to me, I'm like, again, I'm naive as hell. I'm like, what do you mean, man? There's not enough room for all of us. I was like, man, I, I'm, I'm always in the front seat. Like, I, There's not enough room for me to squeeze back. Because my other friend was sitting in the back seat too. And I was like, my other friend is back there. You're back there. I'm going to sit in the front. He was like, hey, get in the back seat. Ooh, ooh. And I say, like, okay, cool. Brandy, have fun. <laughs> exactly. I don't know where this is going, but I shall get in the back. This is the look, look, get a little dicey. So I get in the back seat and he immediately starts grabbing my ass. And I'm like, whoa. <laughs> What are you doing? He's like, ah, 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 ah. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, cool. I'm still, I'm still so naive to what's going on. And so then I'm in love with a stripper stars playing, and I'm singing it. I'm in love with a stripper. And she rocked, and she rocked, and she rolling. And I remember looking at him, and I was like, oh my god, you don't know this song? He's like, oh, never heard it. Like, Come on, Andrew, you don't know this song. <laughs> Literally, I think it was like Connor or something. And, of course and, it was. And then I turn my face, and he turns it, and he just starts making out with me. But I'm into it now. Let me tell y'all how shit goes to hell. So we're making out, and he over the hand grazes my boob right Ooh. nothing nothing crazy and we're just making out right so my friend is in the front she starts recording a little snippet of it we both we both argued about this for like years and we've come to terms with that we both had a little bit to blame what the, what the aftermath okay. was okay. she records that video and we make out the whole ride to the gas station the whole ride back i'm feeling frisky i'm feeling <laughs> fishy i'm like oh my god i'm that girl like i just made it out with a boy at the beach. like i'm turned <laughs> up oh my god and so i was like oh my god send me the footage i gotta show the girlies like i gotta put it in the group chat yeah. right and so Not the group she, <laughs> my friend was like, bro, no, you know how your stepmom is. She's gonna, she's gonna find this video. We're gonna get caught. I'm like, pish posh. I'm gonna put in the recent to delete it. We're all gonna be fine. Oh. And so she sends it to me. I send it to my friends and then I put it in the recently deleted file. Get home. My stepmom routinely went through my phone all oh the time. My God. Like I had zero privacy as a child, like none. I couldn't close my bedroom door, nothing like that. The next day she was like, give me your phone. Cause she just went, she always went through my phone for the hell of it. And then she comes in my room and she's playing the video and I'm like, ah, you got me. <laughs> and she was like, and she was like, who the, who the fuck is this? It's Connor. And then she was like, and I was like, oh, cause like at the time me and my friend looked similar, especially from like the side. Mm. Uh, so for a split second, I did throw up, think about throwing her under the bus. Uh, but I was like, you know what? It's me, whatever. So then her, she tells my, she tells my dad, they're calling me a slut and a whore and I'm fast in the ass and you're, you're going to be pregnant your first semester of college. You're going to get pregnant by a thug and all this, all this other shit. So then the next week was spring break. They took my phone, took my TV. I'm a prisoner again. Okay, yeah. cool. Didn't get TV privileges for the rest of my senior year. Mind you, prom, prom was in March. And then she told my friend's parents, whatever, then my friends weren't allowed to see me anymore because I was like a bad influence. My stepmom didn't stop there. Of course not. So she sent the video to everyone in my family. <laughs> no. That's child porn. Yes. And wait, everybody hold your, hold your horses. She showed every teacher at my school. <gasps> She's a wicked stepmom. You are very Cinderella. <laughs> like very wicked. And mind you, I went to the same school, K through 12. So it was like some of my elementary school teachers. That's so ridiculous. And, and, like, then, so and cool. the fact that some of the teachers even watched it, that's how you know my school was. But you were just kissing. You it was just, it was just There was, was no just neck. Kissing. There was no like bending down in the crotch. Like you were just it kissing. Like Kim that's so K. not fair. Like, they literally, teachers were like walking past me in the hallway, like snickering at me. Like, ah, oh, I saw your video. And I'm like, you're 48 years old. 
Like, what the hell? They were are... like only eight years older than Raven. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. And like, everybody treated me like I was Kim Kardashian. That's yeah. so sad. Like, you would have thought that I literally had sucked off eight guys in the backseat of a yeah. truck. Was the kiss worth it in the yeah, end? Yeah, it was. Yep, so, I like it. You know what? You got to ask for forgiveness. You got to, what you is mean, that? It's better to ask for forgiveness than permission. Permission, exactly. And you take it. And then also, I was 17. Like, oh, and I was literally like fair. a month from graduating high school. You can't kiss nobody at 17? That's what I'm saying. That's not that's fair. That's crazy. But yeah. I wasn't allowed to date forever. Mm -hmm. But babes, your turn. Tell us about, that okay. sucks. We'll unpack all that other stuff. We gotta <laughs> get to it. So my first kiss, similar to you, I was kind of like a late bloomer. Mm -hmm. Senior year, I was 18 years old and I was kind of pushed into it, mm -hmm. similar to you, in the sense that my friends were like, Go into that room. Go into that room. And I was like, I don't want to go in that room. And they pushed me in the room. Were y'all playing like Seven Minutes in Heaven? No. They literally That's were a game? just like. Yeah. You never played Seven Minutes in Heaven? No, you guys. What is it? Can I play now? Well, it would be a little awkward with a third, but you guys can play. <laughs> you, go into, you go into a closet for seven minutes. With, with, some, with somebody with else. You like, like, you spin the bottle, and then whoever it lands on, you would go into the closet with them for seven minutes yeah. and do. Oh, oh y'all upgraded like, spin the bottle. Yeah, Got I was going to say, it was like an. Yeah, yeah, a leg up from Spin the Bottle. Anyway, no, we weren't playing Seven Minutes in Heaven. What we were playing was Miranda needs to get fucking kissed okay. because she's 18. <laughs> okay. And like this has, and so my friend who didn't go to the same school as me knew that I liked this guy. Mm -hmm. And she told the other guys and they all kind of like rallied around and pushed us into a bedroom together. Mm -hmm. It was the most awkward thing. I remember we were like staring at each other and I did not know what to say and he didn't know what to say. And I was like... So, how are you? And then you he's come like, here often. Yeah, right. He's like, do you come to this house party on a regular basis? And he was like, I'm going to go. He left the room. They literally, the guys were standing, like his group of guy friends mm -hmm. were standing outside the door. They pushed him back in. Then we're like in there again. And he's like, let me out, let me out. And I felt so embarrassed and weird. And then as we were leaving that night, my friend and I, we get into my car and it starts pouring rain. Mm -hmm. And he comes out and I see him like standing in the middle of the street. And I was like, fuck this. Like, I am going to kiss <laughs> like him. Like a movie. Yep. And like a movie, I went and I just kissed him in the middle of the street in Studio City. Drama just dramatic, my friend. <laughs> dramatic. <laughs> and then we were together for two weeks and then he broke up with me to Dang. get back together with his ex-girlfriend and when she didn't want to take him back, he then called me and he was like, oh wait, I was just kidding. Can we be together? But he was my first everything. I lost my virginity to him. Mm -hmm. I didn't get punished. No one recorded it. So you just had to live with the embarrassment. Yeah. But that it wasn't was... really embarrassment because you got the kiss at the end of the day. I did. And then he was also my boyfriend and was like very much in love with mm -hmm. me. And then we had, you know, and then I ended up, he was the only person I've broken up with. Okay. I have relations. a question. Okay. If you don't mind me getting in y'all's business. Are you by, are you both lesbians or are you both bisexual? Well, we've both dated men and women, mm -hmm. but now for the sake of the conversation, I guess, when people ask that, I say that I'm a lesbian because mm -hmm. I'm married to a woman and plan to stay here mm -hmm. forever. Okay, nice. So, what about you, babe? Um, I am a pure lesbian. Okay. Yes, I was with guys before. She's way more lesbian, lesbian -y. Mm -hmm. than me. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm a lesbian. Yeah, like I believe it, Raven. <laughs> yeah. you, don't have to, you don't have to convince me. Yeah, no, it's like fully. That's pretty hard. But like, Raven yeah. is a lesbian. Because yes. my first kiss was with a girl. Really? <laughs> Let's yes. get into it. Yeah. Um, it was summer. Oh, take me back. And I feel so bad because you guys are like, I was 17. I was 16. No, you were like four. Calm down. <laughs> Not too much. <laughs> Calm all the way down. Seven. But I was around 12, 11. Mm -hmm. So 11. Um, my best friend at the time, spending like weeks at her house, we decided to play Truth or Dare. Yeah, I decided to get a little weird. Yeah, she's getting a little weirdos. And um, Truth or Dare happened. And we went underneath the covers and we pecked. Then, after that, we tried it again. So I lived in an area that also had like marshes and forests. Mm -hmm. And we would go adventuring mm -hmm. in the forest. And so I remember that we stood over a creek. I'm sorry, we, we crossed the creek and there was this big log. And we sat there and we kissed. And she had braces. And I'm like, this is crazy. I really like this. Ooh! You know sexual awakening? And you I apologize braces? for it now. Because she came back to me years later. She was like, you really fucked me up in the head. I was like, sorry. Oh. There was other things that happened after uh, that. Oh, okay, moment, okay. But like, uh, <laughs> not during that time, like later. Later. Yeah. Um, and then my first kiss was with a guy was actually in high school in the staircase. I skipped class and it was this really cute guy. He had great hair. But I know that I'm a, like a full blown, mm -hmm. even though I had those experiences because I say this and oh my God, I'm, I'm like sweating. But like every time I had some type of sexual experience with a man, mm -hmm. I'd like remember what happened. 
and like regurgitated it back with girls. Yeah. <laughs> I would just like do the motions to get what I needed to get done, except for my seven year relationship with a guy. But he mm-hmm. knew that I was gay. I was like, You want a girl in the house? What's up? What's up? What's up? Oh, he was good. Yeah. She wanted a third mm-hmm. all the time. All the time. All the time, want a third. I want to go back and unpack. So when you were explaining your first kiss, you definitely talked about a lot of stuff that happened to you as a kid in your family home. Mm-hmm. How are you dealing with that now? Do you see any aftermath effects of mm-hmm. how that changes in relationships? Like, I don't know. I just feel like once you are traumatized, it kind of like ingrains its way into everything that you do. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, for instance, I grew up in a very, like, physically abusive household and verbally abusive. So, like, I uh, was never talked to with kindness. Mm. So, I never talked to anybody with kindness. So, with my friends, like, me being mean was just, like, a joke. Like, guys, I'm just being funny. But it was actually, like, really fucking hurtful. Like, I said some really mean shit to my friends. And, like, I didn't even realize how mean I was until uh, we were in college I mean, all my friends, my friends from high school, we are, we're all still friends. We all stay friends. And um, we would just be talking. They'd be like, yeah, Fanita, you were a fucking bitch in high school. And I was like, was I? I thought I was a joy to be around. And they would name, like, several things that I had said. And I was like, oh, my God, I'm horrible. Like, I'm sorry. Like, I'm so sorry. And I think that was the first moment I had to, like, self-reflect and be like, I have a lot of stuff to unpack because I don't want to hurt the people that I love. I don't want to say these things, but it was hard for me to be nice because nobody was nice to me. Yeah. And I didn't know how to be nice. Like I didn't know like what was kind and what was not kind. Yeah, you I, I, I understand well. that we have situations mm-hmm. in my, our relationship and I'm like, I don't know how to do this because it was never done to me. Yeah. So the things that you need, you got to teach me because mm-hmm. me too, my household was very interesting. I don't yeah. really go into it, but I see you mm-hmm. and You don't know what you're doing because you're a kid and that's how you're raised. So you're just regurgitating it. It's a big, big blow to the face, Mm -hmm. but also all the the heavy boulders get lifted off of your shoulder when you realize what's going on. How did you course correct for yourself? Because something that Raven and I talk about where she is similar to you, Mm. I say to her oftentimes, like, although there is a complicated relationship that she has with being a child star and Mm -hmm. working... On set, she had examples of what healthy relationships mm-hmm. may look like or what kindness could look like. Or even the interaction in a scene mm-hmm. would give her, you know, oh, okay, planting yeah. these seeds. So for you, how did you start kind of discovering mm-hmm. what actually is being kind to somebody? And I started, one, I like, I apologize to all my friends uh, about my past behaviors. And obviously they've all forgiven me because they understood. Mm-hmm. Uh, I started like going to counseling and started talking to people. And then I kind of just started like using the internet and like, you mm-hmm. know, looking at stuff. And because I feel like the internet is a good resource for hearing people's stories or hearing yeah. people talk. And then also I had to like, just look within myself and like try to physically like, mm, don't say that. Like, and try to, like, filter myself. Because if y'all think I have no filter now, when I was younger, I had zero. Like, any thought that came to mind, I said it out loud. Like, I did not care at all. And then also, like, with the people around me, I just try to make it um, a safe space. Because obviously, I'm a flawed human being. And I'm not going to be perfect. I'm going to, like, say things that aren't right. And I'm going to still make mistakes as I, like, grow as a person. So I also just try to make sure that the people around me keep me in check, too. Because sometimes with me... My mind moves so fast and I talk so much and I say so much all the time that I'll say something and completely forget that I you said it. You don't even hear it. Yeah. yeah, exactly. It just leaves my mouth. Because for some reason with me, people in my life are intimidated by me. Mm. And, I, and I think, and I don't I don't know why. And It's because like, of your confidence. You are, yeah. yeah, but it's also like you've known me for years. You know that I'm not going to be mad at you if you tell me yeah. I hurt your feelings because that's the last thing I ever want to do. And then also like, my friends have definitely gotten more comfortable with just being able to like talk to me about stuff or whatever because I am a very um, understanding person and I'm very rational and I'm the type of person that I don't have a problem like apologizing if I did something that was genuinely wrong. You yeah. Know? Do you yeah. talk to your parents now? Hell fuck no. That's what yeah, I was good for ask you. you. <laughs> good for I you. went to no contact. So unfortunately when I graduated high school I was still 17 and my stepmom mm-hmm. wouldn't let me leave cuz you're not 18, you're not growing, you're not going nowhere. The summer before I went to college was hell on earth. Like mm-hmm. I had no electronics, I had no phone, I couldn't mm-hmm. see any of my friends, I couldn't talk to any of my friends for like 2 months of the summer. And then the first human interaction I got was when I went to um tour my college and I went to orientation. I never got that cell phone back that she had took from me, so I had to like use my graduation money to buy a new cell phone. Mm. And so then by that time, 
once I had a new cell phone that I paid for that she couldn't go through, like I was able to like do a little bit more and like hang out with my friends and stuff. Um, so then like a couple days before my 18th birthday, she kicks me out. She told the neighborhood that I ran away. I couldn't have left that house and packed my stuff without okay, her knowing. No. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like there's no way I just ran away. And so I went to go live with my brother, but you know, I feel like no kid should go through what I had to go through. But at the same time, like sometimes for me, it's just like, it is what it is. And also, I feel like victory wouldn't taste as sweet to me if I had had it, like, spoon-fed. Immediately. Yeah. Correct. Speaking of spoon-fed, I kind of want to feed you something. So you guys just talk okay. about okay. <laughs> I think you look like you need a home-cooked meal from I do. a mom. A lesbian mom. That's why she married me. She yeah, I, I always felt that she was a lesbian mom. I'm, I'm sitting on the fence because I'm like, I feel for you. Mm-hmm. But then I also know that success has to come with some bruises. Yeah, and I even thought that growing up. Like, when I was a kid and I'd write my journal, I'd be like... This is only happening to me because my life as yeah. an adult will be great. Yeah. So it's like, even I thought that. Like, I feel like, you know. But that's, that's special. I'm sorry to cut you mm-hmm. off. That's no, special because a not, a, not a lot of people can do that. I think that's a particular type of personality and a different type of brain and your higher self doing that. Because mm-hmm. there are some kids that are in similar situations and don't make it out. Mm-hmm. Don't find a way to make money and buy their own cell phone. And they also continue that toxic cycle mm-hmm. of whatever pain your father and your stepmother went through that is the difference yeah. and i think you're i call it the the x factor the mm-hmm. spark in you did you ever see the movie split yes that's kind of how i feel like mm-hmm. i don't really connect with people if you didn't have some kind I of i literally made history. a video about this on tiktok like two weeks ago i was like if you don't have any sort of trauma i don't think we can bond i don't think we can bond. because when when i act a certain way you won't get me and you won't understand you'll think i'm being crazy or i'm being this but if you have trauma, you understand that like shit happens and it's not who you are. You're just a product of your environment. You know, like you're, you're not that person in your core, mm-hmm. but unfortunately you weren't molded to be the best person. And so now you don't have the best actions. And that's why I feel like for me is why I became like such an empathetic person. I have a lot of, I have a lot of empathy. That's why I'm so understanding because I get it. Sometimes I feel like I'm like 45 years old. You I, don't read 25. Yeah. Like your soul reads a lot older, which is a, positive thing but then you also have a youthfulness to mm-hmm. you but like there's some 25 year olds who be like i don't want to talk to them right now they're yeah. like seven mm-hmm. but you can tell you've been through some stuff yeah and i, I think had to that's grow why you're up funny. very young like i had to grow up super super young and i had to like fend for myself when i was young you know some people might think i'm harsh or i'm mean but it's like i never had the luxury of anybody being nice to me and then i had to go to school with a bunch of white people and i'm black yeah I went and so that was horrible too that was really abusive Yes, yes, I went yes. to school with a whole bunch of white people too. I know about it. Yeah. It's a different kind of world. Oh, I, I went can't to school. Wait. I went to school with a whole bunch of Korean people and like two black people. Oh, two of them? Two whole black people? Two whole black people. They're <laughs> sitting here today. <laughs> and they were rich. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Okay, what's mine? So here we go. That one's mine. If you have listened to Fanita's podcast, you know that this was long awaited. And this is my sauce that the internet um, you know, thinks has you know what. Yep. You guys, this is my favorite meal for my wife. Okay, Fanny, that's, that's a little. I'm gonna kiss the mouth after I taste it. That's a little, right? She's gonna love me. This is a With little these taste. And vampire kiss. <laughs> it's a little bit of a tasty, tasty. We'll see. You said you were gonna okay. rate it. Okay. Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> okay. Okay, Biggie. <laughs> Can Biggie cook? Biggie can cook. This Biggie. is good. Yay. Let I'm me, so glad. Let me tell you why it's amazing, you guys. Can I have a Tupperware container of this to take home? Is yes. that extras? Yes. There's more. Okay, so my wife and I talk about this a lot. So you know you go into restaurants. Some restaurants are like, oh, the food is good. And then mm-hmm. some restaurants are like, man, this food is slamming. Yeah. The difference is the Thank love you. that's Thank used. You. It's not the ingredients. This was made with love. It was made with, with love. love. You can feel the love okay. in the food. It's super simple. It's like... Pasta, tomato sauce, and meat, mm-hmm. but it's the heart that she puts into it. And it tastes really light. It's not like super heavy. It it's is. a whole bunch of butter, girl. Yay. So rate it. I would give this I would give this rate it one through teen. I would give this an eight point seven five. Eight point seven five. Why yes. do I get deducted? Because it's not hot. Well, it's about to be hot <laughs> once it's done. Well, no, as Vanita we'll eats. <laughs> I could have used let me taste it again. Maybe. Maybe some harm. Mm-hmm. Let me explain. It's good. <laughs> we're glad you came to have some food and we'll have I really, the rest of our Literally, I didn't actually believe that they were going to cook for me, but she did. Oh, I she did. She's a woman of her word. I, I'm a woman of my word. Okay, let's raise our glasses because we need to make a toast. I to raise me. a glass if you are wrong hey. in all the right ways. All my underdogs. Hey. We will never be, never be anything but loud. Nitty gritty, dirty little freaks. So, I know.
know this Beautiful. song. Okay, so you guys, today yeah. we're toasting to the person in Detroit who thought it would be really fun to put a bunch of marshmallows, I'm talking over 10,000 marshmallows, in a helicopter and fly them over a park with a bunch of kids in it and then drop them to the ground and then have the kids collect the marshmallows but not eat the marshmallows because now they've been what's contaminated. It contaminated from being dropped from the air, whatever. So then they had to collect all the marshmallows and then hand them over to someone else and then be given a piece of candy to eat. So we are <laughs> toasting to that Detroit official who did a marshmallow run. You know, it kind of reminds me of the marshmallow experiment. Have you guys heard of that? No. no. Okay, so the marshmallow experiment is a very interesting childhood experiment where you sit a child in a room by itself. You uh, put one marshmallow down. Oh, so if they eat it. And you put two time. marshmallows mm-hmm. down. And you say, you know, if you don't eat this, I'll give you three more. Mm-hmm. If you eat it, then you that's all you get. And then they watch a child from behind. It's like a bigger marshmallow experiment. Yeah, yeah. like the biggest marshmallow experiment ever. And just the photos of these kids, like, seeing but marshmallows. But why marshmallows? Three- I guess because if it gets hit you in the head, it doesn't hurt. Oh, yeah. yeah, If it just threw now and laters at a whole bunch of kids. Like, can you find that? Everyone has, like, black eyes. That'd be crazy. I mean, it's kind of cute. I'm sure they have fun. Cheers. Cheers to that. Also, look how cute this coffee cup is. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you so much for coming by the house. Thank you so much for- Oh, shit, this is it? <laughs> We're done. This is it. <laughs> we gotta eat, girl. That's, yeah. that's right. <laughs> we gotta eat. Thank you so much for having me. This has been beautiful. I loved it here. I feel like we're friends. Like I'm sorry. Will you cut back over? Yeah, I would. I Without would. the camera? Yeah, I would. I would come to hang. Yeah, you should. Like, and then when you do, the food will be hot because it won't have to be prepped two hours before you come because <laughs> yeah. we're you know yeah we're making, just be making TV for you guys. You can like play spin the bottle and get a little weird. Oh yes. <laughs> seven minutes. Well, so seven minutes, minutes seven in heaven. heaven is. Yeah. Ooh. I'll take it. Oh my God. Now, if you want to watch what happens after this, go to the Patreon. <gasps> oh, we don't have one of those yet, but we're going to. Um, <laughs> comment down below if you guys have ever played Seven Minutes in Heaven. Comment down below if you have something that you want us to toast to. And give us all of your socials, please. Yes. Um, TikTok, Instagram, at Fanita. And make sure you tune in to Bottoms Up with Fanita and go check out our episode as well. Yes, it was so much fun. We love you, Fanita. Thank I you. I love you guys. Bye. 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 That was fantastic. Now I can finish my spaghetti.